Welcome to this video series where we are covering the CAT or Computer Application Technology Prac Exam Paper 1 from November 2023 for your Grade 12 exams. Hopefully that can help you prepare for them. Just take note that in the video description we have links to the data files where you can then go practice as well as links to the other videos for the other questions because this video we are looking just at question 4 which is the final Excel question. So here we at question 4 which is another spreadsheet question and we've opened up four cells which I've done already. Here it is. Here's the four cells spreadsheet. Just a reminder again, when they tell you to work in a particular worksheet, make sure that you are in the correct one. You don't want to be making changes to the wrong sheet. So the sales worksheet, so I come over here, we are in sales. So that's great. That's a good start. And then let's start with 4.1. Change the format of column H to an appropriate data type and make sure that all the information in the column is visible. So let's go to column H. So let's find column. There's column H. So first of all, we can't see this data. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click over here to widen the column. The moment you see those hashes, it means that the data is not visible. So by double clicking at the top there, oh, there's a little message. I would click, okay, we're probably going to have to sort that out at some point. We've just made it a bit bigger. You could have manually done it and make it a bit bigger, but so you can see everything, but that's the first thing. But they want us to change the format of column eight, the whole of column eight. So I'm assuming all of this data over here, we want to change. You see all the data over there. We want to change it so that it's an appropriate value. So total cost, that's got to do with money. So I would assume we're going to change it either some sort of currency or accounting. They haven't been specific, so I'm assuming currency is fine. I think they'll accept either one. So if we do that, you'll notice that, oh, even then it's still not big enough. So let's make it a little bit bigger. So what you can do, just remind you, you can click over there on the edge and it'll make it big enough so that everything can fit. Okay, so there we go. So we can see all the values. So that's, I think, the first two marks. Then 4.2, add a function in C3. So let's go find C3. There's C3 over there. So there's actually a formula there already. It was an attempt to determine if the total interest is 8% of the total car prices. However, the function displays incorrect results. So we must correct this one. So they want the total interest. They want E3 is 8% of the total car prices. So over here, the unfortunate bit is it's referring to C3 in its formula, which means it's probably got a, that's that circular reference message that popped up. So C3 is referring to itself in the formula. We want a formula to determine if the total interest is 8% of the total cost. So this is going to say yes or no, or true or false. So that's why there's an equal design. So we want to determine if the total interest is 8%. So the total interest is what? The total interest is E3, not C3. So we want to say if E3, so let's change that to E3 over there. If the total interest is the same equal to 8% of the total car prices. So we're going to say if it's 8%, which is 0.08, that is correct of the total car prices, sum of E. So the total of all the car prices. So there we go. That is the total of all the car prices. And it's times about 0.08, which is 8%. We want to ask if that is the same as E3. And we're going to press enter. And it says false. That is saying that it's not the same. So there we go. At least we've taken the error out. Okay, so it was just simply that, and it's one mark, so that it makes sense. Insert a function in C5 to calculate the total price of all the Hyundai models. Hyundai I models. I don't know if that's maybe a tricky part. Let's just have a look at that. In C5, so let's go to C5. We want to find all the Hyundai I models. So how do you, so there's Hyundai, but they want the I models, like the i30 or the iX. No, but that's a BMW iX. But is there another I value there? i20. So it's not just I, it's Hyundai, and there must be an I over there. So we are trying to find find the total price. Now it's six marks, which means there's quite a bit that we need to do here. So let's think about this logically. So we want the total price, column E. So we want to add up the total price if the brand is Hyundai and if the type of Hyundai has an R in the front of it. Okay, so let's do that. So we are summing the total price, which means we sum in all these prices based on two criteria, which means we are using a sum if. So we can say equals sum if, but we are doing two criteria. We're looking at the brand and the model. So that's actually sum if. So to do some ifs, what do we do first? Now first, with some ifs, it's slightly different to normal sum if. Some if you do the, the range criteria, then your criteria, then you, what you sum in. But with the sum ifs, we've got the sum range first. What are we summing first? We want to sum the price, column E. So I'm going to take all of these values all the way down. So take note, it's from 9 to 50. So let's put a comma there. Now we put our range of our first criteria. So the range of our first criteria, we're looking at this block here. So it's also going to go from 9 until 50. Make sure that your numbers match. 9 to 50, 9 to 50. So there we are. We're looking in the red column. What are we looking for? We're looking for the word Hyundai. So let's go double quote. Remember your criteria must be in double quotes. And we're looking for the word Hyundai. 
Okay. I drive a Hyundai. Actually, I drive a Hyundai i10, which means my car, no, I've got the cheaper version. My car would be picked up in this thing. So let's go. So we're looking in the red block for the word Hyundai. Make sure you spell it correctly. Then we want to look in the second criteria. This is the difficult part. So we're going to look in this block now. So I'm going to select my second criteria range, which is going to be this block. It must also go from 9 to 50. Make sure that this is 9 to 50. So what are we looking for? Now I can't look for just R. And that's what some of you might be thinking. Just do that. If I just do R, it's going to look for all of the blocks that equal R exactly. And none of them do. They must equal R with something after it. So R30, R10. Now I can't list all of them. But what I can do is I can use a wildcard which means I'm going to put a star there. If I put a star there, that means it's going to look for R and then anything after the R, any text that star will replace. So R30, yes, there's that 30 will be covered by the star. If I come over here, that R10 grand, 10 grand will be covered by the star. Star means anything, any text. It must start with an R and then there must be text after that R. So that's how we're going to do it. So let's go and press enter. And it gives me a value which I assume must be correct. So there we go. So that's the six marks. So remember with some ifs, it's first what you sum in, then your first criteria block, what are you looking for in that block? Then your next criteria block, what are you looking for in that block? Taking note that in this case, we didn't want R's, we want R somethings, which means that's why we have the R star. So let's go to the next question. Modify the function in A11. So there's already a function in A11. Let's go to A11. A11. There we go. You can see it's not working. Modify it to display the initials of the customer in column B. So let's go look. So the customer in column B, the initials do we? So we want all the letters. So we basically want to start copying. They're copying from the middle of B11, which is correct, but they are copying from zero until the length of B11. Now we don't want to start copying from zero. We want to start copying from the space. Do you see there's a space there? That's how we know when the initials start. So we need to find where the space is. Actually, we I don't even know if the space would work because what happens if their surname is like Fundamav and then they've got two, they've already got spaces. So there isn't a case like that. But just to be sure, let's be looking actually for the comma. Let's find the comma. So I'm actually going to say find the comma. So this is zero. I'm going to change it to a find because find finds the position of what are we looking for? We are looking for a comma. So I'm putting double quotes, a comma. That's what I'm looking for. And I'm looking for it in this block. So that's going to say copy from B11, find the position of the comma, and then copy for the rest of the text, basically. So let's see what that does. It's not going to be correct. It goes and finds the comma, and then copies from that comma till the end. Okay, that's great. But I don't want the comma, and I don't want the space. So I want to find that comma and space, and I want to go two places after it, because it's always comma and a space. Find that position, then go one, two spaces after it. So I'm going to just plus two to it. And that means it'll find the comma and then go two blocks after it and start copy from that middle part till the end. Let's try plus two. There we go. It did get the XR. And if we had to drag this down, it should not affect the other values. That's how you can test that it's working because it will not change the other values. Even though the formula has now been used, it'll give you the same results. The recap, we just, we didn't copy from zero. We copied from the middle. We went and found where the comma is in B11. And once we found where that comma is, add two to it because we don't want to copy the comma in the space. We're going to go after it. One, two, um, and start copying from there. And the reason why we use the length is because sometimes there could be two characters. You could use like three or four, but yeah, that's that seems to be working. So I'm happy with that. If you had used the space, you would have gone plus one. I don't think space is potentially a problem because if your surname has spaces, then it's not going to do the, the initials, but they didn't in this case, but there we go. So there are lots of ways of doing that's the one way I did. Reminder, you can use these building blocks over here if you need help with calculating those things. So let's look at the next question. So number 4.5, the total cost of the car is calculated by adding the price and the interest. However, if the buyer wants to buy accessories, an additional 5% is added. So we must insert a formula in H10 to calculate the final cost. So that's a little bit more tricky. So we got two scenarios. So that's normally an if statement. So let's work this out. So let's go. If I come here, there's H10. We must work out the total cost. So we're basing it on the extra. So let's first, let's use building blocks. Let's see how we would do it using this. The total cost is calculated by adding the price and the interest. Price plus interest equals the price plus the interest. Are you happy with that formula? That's the price plus the interest. That's the price. But if they want accessories, then an additional 5% is added to the total cost. Okay, so if that's a yes, then they don't want that price. They want that price plus an extra 5%, which is equal to that value plus an extra 5%. So how do you add 5%? Well, it's 5% of 5%, 5 divided by 100 of 
the price, what I think is correct. Okay, so that's 5% of that price. You could have also done equals that value times about 1.05, which means times about the full price plus another 0.5%, that would give you the same result. There are lots of ways of doing it. If this block here, the extras, that's how we know whether they get, if that block equals the letters Y-E-S, if that's a yes, then we are using this block. If it's not, then we're going to use that block, which is just the normal price. So the K10 is the price with the 5%, and the J1 is the one without. So only if it's a yes, do we get that block. If it's not, we get that block. So let's see if we get the same result. I can't copy it down because I haven't done these for the other. So let's just copy these down over here. And then if, if I drag that down, we should see no change in those values. So therefore, it's correct. So that's how you can use those building blocks. You could have also done it in one go. So instead of going K10, you could have said, well, that is equal to the price plus the interest times about 1.05 and then if it's not a yes then you could replace the j10 with just that block plus that block but as you can see that gets very complicated and very difficult to debug or to change if you've made a mistake that's why it's quite nice to make these little building blocks where you can do parts of the formula and just refer to them do whatever it works best for you you will still get all the marks if you use these building blocks there we go that one was quite tricky but four marks let's move on to 4.6, the last bits for six marks. We must modify the chart in the chart worksheet. So let's go to the chart worksheet. So let's go to chart sheet. So there's our chart sheet. So they want us to do what? What do they want? The column colors have been set to vary by point. Okay, so let's first see it. First thing we must do, let's look at what's changed. So there's six things that we need to change about it. So let's see what we can identify is different. Okay, so the first thing we notice over here is that there's a legend over there. So there's the legend. So I'm going to come over here and we're going to click on the block and we're going to go and add a legend. So let's go add a legend and we want the legend to be added to the bottom. So there we go. Okay, now it says total price there and there it's got different cars. Now I'm tempted to come to chart design and and to actually switch the rows and columns so that we get that. I'm tempted to do that, but let's just wait. There's a little thing that they've mentioned here, which I don't know if you're aware of. They want you to just change the column colors that have been set to vary by a point. Now, because there's such a big gap here between the different columns, that's why I don't want to do this because here you can see if I switch the rows and columns, they're right next to each other. So let's first see an option. Let's see if we change the colors to vary by a point. Let's see. I want to show you what's going to happen. So when we click on the data series and we're going to right click and we're going to format this data series. Now, the first thing you'll notice is, oh, over here, we can change them to cylinders. That's what I want. So there we go. That's another thing that we've done. So we've got the legend, we've got the cylinders, but now we want to vary the colors by a point. Let's see if that text option is there. So we're dealing with the fill option. So let's click on the fill. You'll notice that the bubbles are around everyone. So all of them are going to be affected by what changes we make. And they vary colors by a point. Look what happens when I do this. When I do this, it does vary the colors by a point. But you'll notice that the bottom has now changed the legend to each individual color because now the colors have changed. So the legend needs to change. So just take note of that. Even though we didn't want to maybe switch the row because then they would be right on next to each other. This way we've got a nice little gap between them still, but we vary the colors by a point. And now we're looking at individual values for each column. So just take note of that. So that looks a lot better. So we've already done that one. We've done the colors by a point that's two and we've done the cylinders. But oh, wait, look, here. there's there's seven here and we've only got six. I think we're missing Audi. So let's go and format the data series. So let's right click and select the data. Let's go format that data. And if we look here, oh, you can see Audi hasn't been selected. So let's make sure that we select Audi. So now Audi is in our range. There we go. That looks a lot nicer already. So that's another thing that's been done. So that's our fourth thing that's been done. Then let's look, let's look at the labels here. So there's a thousand and it goes up like that. Let's have a look over here. So these values aren't the same. You'll notice these values aren't the same as these. Okay. So let's go. It's in, they say thousand. So let's see if there's an option to click on here. And we're looking at the actual data. So let's go look at the actual axis options. If I click over here, so there we can specify the minimum. So let's just double check. Our minimum is zero and it goes to 5,000. So we're happy with that. And I think the intervals are okay. So the intervals are okay, but we want it as thousand. So let's see display units. Let's see what that gives us. Ah, there's a thousand options. Let's see what happens when we do that. See, it puts the thousands in and it makes those values exactly how we want it in our options. So the moment you see a label, what looks like a label over here, it's actually specifying what 
the units is and it's particularly at the top then you know that it's something to do with the display unit so that's what we're doing over there so that's that done and then let's look at four i think we've done one two the colors three adding audio was four that's five there's one more thing that we need to do what's the one more thing i think it's those lines those lines are what need to be added to the grid lines let's go see how we add them so we want to add grid lines so i'm going to click over here to the format area this is the walls and let's see if we can add uh, maybe there's some more grid lines that we can add so those are vertical lines that go up and down major ones if i click on major ones oh there we go if i click on major you see how i put those lines there so i think that is the final thing so there we go i think that is done it looks pretty close let's double check again there we go i think it's perfect so there we go i think that's it we got all six marks so we did six changes i think that's all the marks and that's the end of the excel question well done everyone we have now finished excel we can now move on to the access question Please support the channel by clicking that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment and share us with your friends so we can help them as well. Tell them to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as our other channels at Mr. Long Computer Terms as well as Mr. Long Education on TikTok. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.